Hello, I'm Larry and this is Carter's Country. Today I'm happy to be joined by Bob Dana from Leopold and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, optics obviously. Not specifically just Leopold but just optics in general. Back when I first started hunting we had a variable power, power scope that was kind of a big deal but that was over 40 years ago. Obviously it's a lifetime ago. Uh, now you've got things like first and second focal planes, you've got zero stop, illuminated reticles, so many you know, things that are available now. Talk a little bit about some of those things and how they improve the hunting or shooting experience. Sure, sure. Yeah, the, the optics in general, the advancements over the past couple of years um, has really been at a very fast, fast pace. Um, the precision market is driving a lot of industries, both in military, competition, that type of scenario, and all that is trickling down into the hunting market okay and it's basically producing a much better optic for the hunter right and that's why we're starting to see advancements in guys shooting much further distances than what they ever dreamed of when i grew up hunting in texas if you were dialed in at let's say 150 yards you were good to go but but you know that's changed the, the type of game being hunted has changed uh, to your point, precision, distance shooting, competition, all of those things have changed and obviously are, put a much heavier demand on the optic. And, and like you said, the, the drive to provide those shooters with what they need inevitably is going to trickle down and benefit the hunting market too. That's exact, and that's exactly what happened to myself. I, I grew up in Missouri primarily as a bow hunter and a long distance shot in, in, in cover for a, was that very thing, 100 to 200 yards. Right. Of course, we had up in Northern Missouri, you had your wide open soybean fields and stuff like that. But then when I relocated to Texas and saw what a South Texas Sendero looked like, the distance capability was totally different. And that's what really got me started yeah. in trying to go through and be more efficient at distance with, with an optic. There, there's nothing more frustrating than to have invested the time and money for a hunting trip and then you, you don't have the shooting capability to get the game you see that sure. you want, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, a, as a line, Loophold has a price point offering um, for every aspect of, of, of a hunter. Um, we've always prided ourselves on what you spend with us is what you get. It, right. We at Loophold, you know, we always want to make a uh, the, the best buy for the customer. If a customer was to spend a thousand dollars with us, our goal is to make sure that customer gets a thousand dollars with a rifle scope. And we've always we've always been true to that promise ever since we opened. Well, and, th and that sort of approach, I think, pays off because again, going back to referencing my age, I've seen a lot of other optics companies come and go. Leopold was a big name when I first started shooting and it's as big or bigger a name now. You don't have that kind of consistency and that kind of longevity without having a quality product. And, and like you said, giving somebody their money's worth, it's just that simple. Loophold is, a, is still a, a family-driven company. It's still privately owned. It was started off in, in Oregon. Mr. Loophold, uh, actually his primary job in life at that time, they made high-end survey equipment. Okay. And uh, he was deer hunting and had an optic fog up on him. And when he took a look at the optic, he said, hey, we're, we're making this high-end surveying equipment. And thought, hey, let's carry that over to the rifle optic. And that's how the whole thing started. Leupold was actually the founder of the duplex reticle. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good story, too, how somebody with expertise in, in the field had a practical application where an optic failed him. He had the know-how. He, he had, you know, a need to fill. And so he filled it himself. That's an American success story. <laughs> it is. It is. And we're very, we're very proud of that. And because of that, we've... We've had a lifetime unconditional warranty since the day we've opened our door. We still service scopes that are 30 plus years old. If we can't service that scope, then we'll contact the customer and we'll bring them up to a similar model here in 2022. Right. Um, they may have to put in a portion to get to that point, but we do our best to make sure we take care of the customer. That's, that's incredible. Uh, you know, giving a lifetime warranty on something like a scope when you consider some of the conditions that thing could be put through on a hunting trip, just being outdoors. I mean, that, that, that's a significant warranty to put behind a product that's gonna be put through some of the things, you know, a rifle scope's gonna be put through. Even being shot in, you know, a larger caliber rifle. You know, I, I, I remember the first 300 Win Mag I bought, uh, I was dumb enough to go cheap on the scope because I'd spent so much on the rifle. 
that scope lasted about eight or nine rounds and then my reticle was just floating real nice in there like a snow globe you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> the difficult part of our aspect is when we're trying to get an optic to last that long you know 20 30 years if that optic is illuminated that's where the drive really gets important because that illumination has to stay right there with the optic over that lifespan. Our electronics, things like range finders and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the warranty is a little bit different in that light because it's kind of like going from iPhone 6 to iPhone 7 to iPhone 12. The engines in those things are constantly changing right. and LED uh, does have a lifespan. Um, but when it comes to actual illumination, we pride ourselves on a high quality illuminated scope because it has to last with the rest of the scope over that time span. Right. Yeah, and that illuminated reticles, about how long ago did that come into play as far as for the market? Not necessarily military, but just the commercial market. The it, I would kind of place that in the whole, the beast of second or first and second focal plane. Okay. Um, in a, in a first focal plane rifle scope. Initially, the primary drive with that scope was law enforcement and military. But now as we're shooting further, we're starting to see a lot of that into the hunting market. And when you have a, a first focal plane uh, reticle on very low power, it can be difficult to see. And when we can illuminate it, it brings it up to you. Brings it up and that, you. Okay. that's what that's what has changed. So if a, if a hunter just goes that route, he purchases a first focal plane scope, he goes into thick cover chasing elk or deer or what have you, he backs the scope way down to lower power. The reticle is very small, but as soon as you illuminate it, now your reticle's back. Now you're and good. And that's the purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit, the, the first and second focal plane, kind of layman's terms. What is that about? Okay, so let's place that into application. And then that's, if I could drive any point across is when a person is purchasing a scope, application is the key. In other words, we look at high magnification, low magnification, illumination, big scopes, small scopes. It's just kind of like when you're working with your dad in the garage as a kid and he pulled a specific tool for a specific job. Right. That's what optics are all about too. Okay. And so in a second focal plane setting, if you think about what our granddads were hunting with, right. when you go through and you change the variable power on that rifle scope, the reticle stays the same size, but the deer, let's say, use deer for an example, that deer will expand and contract so that you can zoom it up and make it an easier shot, right. okay? Now, in the, in the first focal plane rifle scope, like the Mark V, when you go through and you change that variable power, the reticle will expand and contract with the image, wow. or will zoom okay. with the image. The reason that's important is, in a reticle that has all these fancy hash marks and tick marks, we call those holdover reticles or hold reticles. When you do that, there's a subtension or, or a measurement that is specific to each hash mark within that reticle. When you drive the variable power, we want that subtension to be consistent as you change it. Okay. So let's put it in application. Let's say that you and I are a sniper team. And unfortunately, we're, we're in a situation where we've got targets and you're the shooter, we've got a consistent wind, and we're shooting these, these, these individuals at distance as we're, we're engaging these targets. And we say, hey, we've got a guy or an individual at 400 yards, 600 yards, 800 yards. When you engage that target, it doesn't matter what variable power you're on, the subtension within the reticle will always be consistent. Okay. In the second focal plane rifle scope, the, let's go back to, for ease of math, the deer hunting rifle scope. In the deer hunting rifle scope, that variable power or the subtension is normally at its point at the highest power on the, on the, on the rifle scope. So let's say this particular scope is, a, is an 18 power rifle scope. If we were to drop it down to nine, we would change the subtension of that reticle. Okay. If you're a tactical operator, that creates math because now they have to do something with that difference in the wind hold. Whereas in the first focal plane rifle scope, it, it, it takes the math out. Okay. So it's a, basically the first focal plane scope in that light is a is a faster operating tool. And that's why it's used for competition, law enforcement, uh, military application, that type of scenario. Kind of takes all of that work out for you. And, it, it does. Yeah. It and I, does. I don't know about you, but when I go shooting or hunting, I'm not really going so I can do some math. That's right. So. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, we've gone through and, and tried to take, you know, that, that math piece is very important for the windage, right? The right. wind drift right to left. At Loophole, we've tried to go through and take the elevation math or component out for you. We have what's called uh, a CDS dial or a custom okay. dial. So let's say that a customer comes into Carter's Country. They purchase a, a rifle scope that has a CDS turret that's available to it, okay? 
you guys have a shooting range here at this particular store, that customer can go through and chronograph the rifle and get some atmospheric information, temperature, elevation, that type of scenario, go to our website and they can log in and actually create a custom dial that's specific to the ballistics or the performance of their rifle. Wow. So let's say that, you know, a guy, one of the most popular calibers right now is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. One of the most popular hunting ammo is Hornady 143 grain Yield DX. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great ammo. Well, when that customer goes through and applies for the dial, we'll send the dial back. It will be laser etched with that information of ammunition that he's running. And then instead of having a dial that comes back in minute of angle, it will come back in yardage. Okay. So let's say that we're sitting in the box blind and I range the deer and I say, hey, you've got him sitting out there. He's at 550 yards. On your dial, instead of worrying about minutes of angle or mills or trying to figure out ballistic math, you literally dial to 5.5. Wow. And it takes the elevation component completely out. Does everything for you. Yeah. So here in Texas, for example, we've got all these guys that love their South Texas deer hunting leases, right? Uh -huh. And across their whole lease, they'll have consistent elevation and a fairly consistent temperature here in the fall. You know, uh, average day in the fall, 50, 60 degrees. Right. We can plug all that in and do the ballistics calculation for you. And it will be specific to that, to that area. To, with that low, with that caliber with that load that that specific load and all of that and and it's just dialed in it's right there now you'll have some customers uh, i know you guys have them here at cars country guys will come in and say well i do have a south texas deer lease but then two times a year i, I like to go out west and i'll chase elk and antelope for example mm -hmm. well when you pull into that denver area and you're chasing antelope at 5,000 feet of elevation and then you climb up to say mule deer elk elevation at 10,000 feet the ballistics of the rifle will change because right. you've changed some of the atmospheric situation there. So what we'll do, you can cut a second dial. And I usually tell my customers to cut the second dial at about 7,500 foot of elevation. The reason being is on a big game animal, you've got about a 2,500 foot elevation swing to where you'll still be in the kill zone for animals that are the size of antelope, mule deer, elk, and so right. forth. And so it's very simple. You don't have to go through and, and do anything specific to the gun. You simply interchange the turret and you can go through it. It's a simple Allen screw, three screws to loosen it. You simply place the other one on, snug it back up. You can check the zero of your rifle if you want to, line up your stadia lines and you're good to go in a whole different atmosphere. Wow, that's that amazing. Quick. There's people that actually buy a whole nother rifle and scope with a different setup. And now you can just get a second dial set and in your red, that's- uh, Yeah, the, the, each dial, it's, it's very difficult to confuse them because each dial will have all of the atmospherics that you gave us laser etched onto that dial. So interchanging them, there's no confusion to swap back and forth. They're basically it's, labeled. It's, it's labeled, that's correct. So we're running out of excuses when we miss them, basically. <laughs> yeah. I kind of yeah. don't like that because, yeah. you know, 40 years ago I had all kinds of excuses yeah. now. We, we did our very best to try to take the elevation component out. Um, when it comes to the art of shooting, right? No, nobody hunts in a tunnel. And so we have this wind drift thing that goes on. And that's the true art of shooting, right? Yeah. So holding for wind is, is something that's a learned aspect of shooting. But really nowadays with the quality of rifle that a person can buy, the quality of optic and the quality of, I call it shelf ammo, box damn factory right. ammo, um, you can get very consistent results and harvest game out the distances that really we didn't even think attainable a few years ago. A lot of changes, a lot more than I had even realized once you started getting a lot of information in a short amount of time, which is exactly what uh, we needed. So I do appreciate you coming out, spending some time with us and, and doing such a great job of explaining this in terms that, you know, layman's terms, I guess. Uh, something that even I can understand. So <laughs> thank you for that. Absolutely. Carter's Country is proud to carry a full line of Leopold products. If you see something here you like, come into one of our stores. Uh, we have knowledgeable people behind the counter. Be glad to help you out. Maybe not explain it as well as he did, but definitely uh, can get you comfortable with, with what you're looking at, make you feel good about the purchase. Leopold, like I said, as long as they've been in business, I've never seen the name waver. And that's just almost unheard of, really hard to do with the demands, gun, gun buyers and shooters are a very demanding crowd and they will not accept anything short of the best and Leopold delivers. Yeah, so. we, 
we work with, with we work with Carter's Country for several years. Yeah, it's yeah, been, it's, it's a very good very, relationship. It's been a great relationship, <laughs> and we've been very proud to have it. Yeah, well, it's it's been mutually beneficial, and uh, and look forward to continuing uh, many more years. Absolutely. Well, folks, we hope uh, you've enjoyed today's video. And remember, if you've ever shopped, shot, or hunted with us, you're already a part of the Carter's Country family. Until next time, adios. Adios. Cool.